Welcome back at WNST. Towson, from Baltimore. And Baltimore Positive. We're positively back out on the road doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We're going to be at Coco's on Thursday. That's the 13th uh -oh. after the All-Star Game. Then on the 20th, we're going to be at the Beaumont in Catonsville. We'll be crab caked up this time. I mean, I haven't used my crab mallet. Uh, Leonard Raskin gave me this, uh, this great crab mallet. I haven't used it yet. I'm going to use it on August the 3rd for our 25th anniversary. You're going to be giving away these scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery. You can win dough. I had a guy win 100 bucks uh, down at Faithley's back on opening day. Had some lucky winners as well over at Spirits West. Uh, also, our friends at Window Nation, I get to wear uh, the floppy hat. It doesn't look as good as the, uh, the Orioles Miller Lite floppy hat, but it's still a really cool Window Nation floppy hat. Uh, this is a friend segment. It is, uh, it's the All-Star Game Week. I've known this guy since he was a little guy. Now, he's a big guy, but not the big guy, because that's Robbie Sr. at Robbie's first base. <laughs> now, he is Robbie Jr. Man, how old are – so this is my 25th year at NST. Uh -huh. You've been uh -huh. out to the radio station many times. I feel like I've known many your times. old – your old man may have been the first listener of mine at WITH in 1991, uh, back with Kenny <laughs> Albert. So you've had Robbie's first base as long as I've known. Your dad was in the car business. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old you are. I always think of you as being like 20. I know you're not anymore because I've seen your kids. But well, uh, but but I like always think of you. When did you meet me? Do you remember the first time? Like how old were you? I would say the first time we met Nestor, I was probably between 25, 28 years old, sometime around and then. Um, I came to work for my father. Well, number one, I've been working at that store since I was 10 years old. But you looked like you were 18 when you were 25. Is that true? Well, I well, good. Right? Yeah, I hope that's true because that means I look like I'm 30 now and I'm 44. So that I, I like that. But, okay, so we're 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 about eleven years apart. Okay, I I don't know how much older I am than any. Hey, Luke's turning forty this year, and every time Luke says, y "You know, I was born in nineteen eighty three when you knew the or," and I'm like, "Oh my God, you poor <laughs> poor guy." You know what I mean? Being an right, Oriole no. fan, right? Born no, a generation too late, but you, you're even a little older than Luke. So I always feel of you as like the Robbie Junior. I always see sure. you as this youthful guy and all that but like all of these years of hobbying collecting doing all that mm -hmm. stuff you got the tv show going on and all that stuff mm -hmm. i actually invited you on this week to do one of my favorite things which is the babe ruth museum right and mm -hmm. you guys are doing a thing here this week and a lot of you get together and danny and other people i know who are in the hobby and in the in the business of collecting man it was just one guy when i was a boy's jay finglass and Jay's Nostalgia World Baseball, right above the yep. bank over here on Pennsylvania Avenue, just Peak Avenue. That, that, that's, that's where I started collecting cards. And I think that's a lot of it, where a lot of us in Baltimore started collecting cards. We started at Jay's on Pennsylvania Avenue. Then we moved to Jay's. When he moved to York Road, we just followed Jay around. And then probably, in about, like I said, 1989, when we opened, we became Jay's competition, which uh, was interesting because we had started as customers of his. But I tell you what, this card show that the Bay Ruth Museum is putting on, the people at Babe Ruth Museum, Mike Gibbons, Sean Hearn, and Katie Dick, they put this show on for the first time last year. And I'm telling you, for well, something- I was there. Was, I mean, it was oh, amazing. No. It was great. Oh, it was amazing. For something that was a first-time event, it was well-organized, well-attended. And Bordick was, was great, too. It Bordick was great. The guests were great. It was absolutely a first-class, well-ran event. This year, year number two, they're going to have Orioles guests again. We don't know who the guest is going to be. Rumor has it maybe Al Bunbury this year. But what we really do have this year is a really good group of dealers and collectors. We're going to have Danny from Sports Vault. We're going to have us, of course, Robbie's first base. We're going to have Danny McKee, who is one of the most avid collectors in Maryland. This guy has one of the most impressive collections that you've ever seen. Last year, he brought some of the most rare Babe Ruth and early Orioles cards to be on display at the museum. And he, you know, he did a little bit of ex exhibit down there last year where he was showing some people this year, they're going to make a bigger deal out of having Danny there and really show off some of that collection. This guy, I'm telling you, he's got one of the best collections, not only in the state of Maryland, but one of the best collections in the country. And he'll have a lot of those Babe Ruth cards on display this well, week. Well, you need an Aparicio. I got my whole box here for you. I was, yeah, was going to do show and tell with you. If you want to do you show and tell. You you can do show and tell, and you did show and tell last year. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I brought it all down. This is this is obvious. Uh, I keep it in the middle. This is the Aparicio Heartland. Uh, that Those I are got. valuable. So I had a guy come up to me in the '90s. I want to say because I went to all the All Star games, right? We talked about All Star sure. game. So it's been 30 years this week. We 
we had a card show here as part of, of, of the Fan Fest, but it became like a big, big thing in Texas, Philadelphia, the years after, Atlanta. In the late 90s, every year, the card show got bigger at the Fan sure. Fest. And sure. one year, a guy came, tapped me on the shoulder, and someone told him who I was. I might have even been wearing my Oriole Aparicio jersey or something. Heck, he says, mm-hmm. hey, I hear you're related to Louie. He said, I, I got a mint condition Heartland Apari, And I'm like, where? I said, I've been looking for that for 30 years. I saw one that was kind of beaten up years ago, and it had uh-huh. a toe plate. So and Nellie Fox, he had a toe plate that were missing. Yeah. And the guy brought it to me. He's like, look, man, it's probably a $500 thing, just 100 120 whatever. I mean, it, it was not nominal. He didn't give it to me, but he – he made it like I had to buy it. So yeah. I've had it all of these years. It's it's perfect. It's in, in perfect shape. He's in great looks condition. Like, we look a little bit alike, right? Like maybe a little you bit. Do. Around, you, little, yeah, around very much so. Show. Very much so. You're a little more handsome than him. Well, and, you know, so I went back through all this collection and Louis signed so many of these. My favorites were always the, the Kellogg's. This is a 70 mm-hmm. Kellogg's. Uh, yep. I have a 71 Kellogg's, too. Very hard to get that one not beaten up. But here you go. This is the uh, Aparicio Rookie, 56 uh, a rookie. Um, and, and this one, yeah, worth a couple hundred bucks, right? I mean, you ser- yeah, you, this, is, a, this is a serious card. I mean, really good condition, too. Yeah. That's a really good condition card. That's a card that you need to have graded right there. Really? But right. I, and, and that's an, another thing I'd like to, to let folks know. That's something else we'll be doing at this show is that we'll be there on site. We'll let people, we'll appraise people's collections within reason. You know, don't bring your whole entire collection down. You can do, if you want to do that, bring it to the store. What about but, an autograph 56, Louie? Would that, is that better or worse? That, that, that's my wife wondered about this, that if, if he signs it, really signs it, is, does that make it worth more or less? It depends, doesn't it? It makes it worth more now. In the past, people didn't want autographs on rookie cards because there's a collector that collects strictly rookie cards and there's a collector that collects. So in other words, ink cards. on the card defaces the card, even if it's ink. No, from Mickey no, Manning. no, that's a better card now. That is a better card with Aparicio's signature on it with, than without his signature on it. There's no question about it. And once upon a time. So all of these card, that I have signed by him, or it's a good idea that I took the 64. Are a good idea. Seven, are a good it's idea. a good thing that I took the 64 and, and the post uh, as well. See, I can Absolutely. identify all these. I don't yeah. really, you know, I'm old school like that. You know, I know the I, difference between a, a 65 and let's say a 62. A 61. 61. 61. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. 62 is right here. Panel. Sorry. There you go. There's 62, there you go. right? And all of these are signed, so you think they're worth That's more. That's a 68, Ness. Where's the 62? Oh, sorry. 62. My there's bad. 62. <laughs> was, I'm sorry. I just saw the paneling on it, and I looked up, and I'm like, I understand. what the hell you mean? 68, 62. Okay, sorry about uh-huh. that. But you know, people don't know how old school I was. I mean, I used to have a table when I was 12, 13 years old. Literally, I was a dealer. I had uh-huh. a table at the – Right near my radio station, Holiday Inn, Cromwell Bridge. That's uh-huh. where Jay did his event sure. every year. I'm talking sure. 1980, 81, 82. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember when T-Bone Shelby, uh, you know, was playing for the Orioles against the Brewers. We had a card show over at the VFW Hall on um, Old North Point Boulevard in sure. Dundalk, right? Sure. T-Bone Shelby paid him $500. He came over and signed yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. I remember dealing baseball cards in my neighborhood – and, you know, I got rid of a lot. Of, then I found that the George Brett's going for like five grand and 75 bread. I mean, drives uh-huh. me crazy. And the, yeah, but yeah. you've been in it from the beginning of the beginning. You, your dad, it's your business. And now you're like on a television show again, right? So we're lucky enough to have been on a television show, television show 10 years ago with Ball Boys. Now the producers for Ball Boys, they've reached out to us again. And now we're making another show called The Golden Touch. Can, Can I tell you what again? pisses me off about Ball Boys? What's, okay. What's that? They didn't come right. back. So listen, I'm going to talk bad about friends of mine, all right? Okay. So if anybody knows the people over at Chaps, over on Roof, I grew up in Chaps. Yeah. I chased girls yeah, yeah. in the bar, in the disco, <laughs> ate pit beef, and I, 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 I ate her father's food at Glava's up at the, next to G&A Coney Island Hot Dog. And hot. Okay. So I'll just say okay. this. I go into Chaps, and I go in there more than I admit because they have great sandwiches, but they're not a sure. sponsor, which sure. bumps me out. And, and Bob knows that, you know, and they, they know this. Every time I go in there to get a sandwich, and I went the other day, I'll have you know, yeah. onions, little tiger sauce on there, some barbecue. Uh-huh. You got to look at the freaking pictures at the front of the counter, <laughs> autographed, all uh-huh. Robbie Senior, Robbie, everybody's on, oh, ball boys and all that. Why do I get my face on the wall? I feel like I'm in the middle of you know do the right thing right now, but 
Put some Dundalk people on the wall at, at that's Jabs. Right. Hey, you got oh. a ball, boy. So you're right next to Guy Fieri over there. I've eaten five times the amount of sandwiches either one of you have at Chaps. Well, I'm going to do Chaps one up. We're going to start the Robbie's First Base Hall of Fame, and I'm going to make you the inaugural inductee. How do you feel about that? I'm going to put your picture. I'm telling you what. If I'm going to put it in the front window. And I am because I have a Wikipedia page with a bunch of lies and ish on it to be, <laughs> that was brought up to me this week. Again, nah, you're the real it, dude. I have eaten more Chaps Pit Beef sandwiches than anyone who's famous, maybe even not famous in this city because I'm from that side of town. It was near my house on Cajun. Yeah, like, sure. So I go in there, and the ball boys are right next are to Guy Fietti. I just want you to know that this is yeah. – they just put my picture on the wall in Costas, and it's only because well, we, Bucky's in it. I took a picture I, of Bucky, and because my wife's pretty, so they put right. her in it. But, like, sure. I'm not on anybody's wall anywhere in the city. And after 25 years, it pisses me off to see the ball boys next to Guy Fietti, and I don't – just – they could just put a little picture up. It wouldn't even need to be well, much. Just to say, Nestor, Nestor don't loves these sandwiches. That's don't all. let it bother you. Don't let it bother you. We're going to get you on the wall. Tell Bob and but, Donna. Tell Bob well, and Donna. We're going to get you on the wall. We have Sweet Lou to thank. We have Sweet Lou to thank for being on that wall. But let me tell folks, this show, King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch, is produced by Peyton Manning, Jimmy Kimmel, Brent Montgomery. Um, Brent Montgomery is one of the top reality producers in the country. And obviously, everybody knows who Jimmy Kimmel and Peyton Manning are. I believe that this season one that we just did is the tip of the iceberg for this show. For collectors, six episodes of a 30-minute show are just not enough. But what we needed were mainstream America, just people that enjoyed sports, watch TV. We needed those people to enjoy the show, and it was an absolute hit. It was top 10 on Netflix for the first three weeks uh, in the U.S., and it just it just did so well that I would be absolutely shocked if there weren't a season two in the works within the next couple of months. All right, so so I, much- I, I have something for Ken Golden. You know this, uh-huh. right? You, you know uh-huh. this, right? I do. So I, you want the me to show that? Now, you've seen this before, right? Now, only a handful yeah. of people have seen this. I think I've put it on the show once or twice. Uh-huh. Uh, I've actually shown it to uh, Hunt Auctions. I've shown it to Robbie. I've shown it to people at the Hall of Fame, at, at the NFL mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. I believe I have something that nobody else has. I believe it's a a one-of-a-kind item. I believe it's the first-of-a-kind item. I I think we could all agree that the Super Bowl has become the ultimate event in modern American entertainment and media. And Mm -hmm. we can all agree that Super Bowl I and Super Bowl II weren't called Super Bowls. They were Mm -hmm. called the first annual and second annual AFL-NFL championship game. Kansas Mm -hmm. City Chiefs, uh, Green Bay Packers, Lombardi, all that. L.A. Coliseum that is now called Super Bowl one. But on that day, it was not called the Super Bowl by anybody. The tickets don't sure. say Super Bowl. It wasn't called the Super Bowl on the air. But mm-hmm. that day in L.A., John Stedman was a media member. John Stedman walked into the press box and was given this thing that says first annual Super Bowl. It says the word Super Bowl on it. Mm-hmm. I believe that this and it, and it is. It's as legitimate as legitimate is because uh, apparently um, Stedman was the runner who went down to the locker room and actually talked to Vince Lombardi at halftime. I have <laughs> all of the game notes. This is you can still you can smell this. Remember when they ran the dittos off? It's sure. the purple yeah. ink on this, yeah. right? And then there there's the flip card that Stedman wrote in in his handwriting on both sides of the flip card. So this is a Super Bowl one flip card, which to me is probably. How many of those exist in any, exactly. in any way? And then these are all of the game notes. And this was actually distributed by the people at Disneyland as part of the halftime show. The Disneyland Hotel, you can see it at the bottom. Uh-huh. The, these are the press notes that were distributed that day. So I think I have something for Ken Golden. So you let him know. I, we will. We will. We need, we need that to be a season two piece. Well, Peyton Manning holding the first ever thing that ever said Super Bowl would be kind of cool, I think. It would be. It would be. And I tell you, that's the the cool thing about the show is that athletes are now – athletes have the best collections and media members have the best collections uh, of anybody because they have more access to things than anybody. And what we're finding on this show is that we have a trove of athletes that are just ready to bring their items to auction that they're just waiting in line. So this thing could really be never ending. I mean, the, the amount of things that were turned down 
and some of the most impressive things that were turned down. Like, for instance, we had a Wilt Chamberlain suit that he wore to the Playboy Mansion in the 70s. It was it was awesome. And that didn't even make the show. I mean, it was one of the coolest pieces I'd ever seen. We had the photo match. We had the everything. It had the rabbit's foot hanging from it. It had uh, a little bit of like, you know, it looked like Wilt might have spilled a drink or somebody spilled a drink on him on the sleeve. Still had that on the sleeve. It was it was amazing. Um, it was a piece that uh, was. Do you want the outfit I wore to the Playboy Mansion? What, you want to auction that or no? <laughs> did you wear Did you wear a whole outfit? It wasn't seven foot one. <laughs> well, I tell you, <laughs> that was the cool thing about the Will Chamberlain. When you held the pants up, they were up to your shoulders. Yeah, they're just, just big. The, yeah, yeah, the pants were just up. I mean, it was it was it was amazing. But like that, that is the level of memorabilia that's out there and the things that people have. And uh, that are going to come to auction. I really think this season two is going to happen. Can you get me Joe Namus Llama Skin Rug? Uh, if maybe Robbie <laughs> Davis Jr. Robin Davis, it says on the screen here. Uh -huh. uh, you can find him over at Robbie's first base. You can find him this weekend down at the Babe Ruth Museum. They're doing their annual card show. Uh, mm -hmm. Give to be my best, Al Bumbry. I know we're celebrating 83 here in a couple of weeks. Um, sure are. I, I want to talk a little baseball with you. I mean, it shows sure. great. And I gave yeah. you a hard time about the ball boys. Nah, they even promoted the lottery and the crab cake tour. Mm -hmm. But for this season, in the business you're in, and listen, mm -hmm. I say this to Cal Ripken. I say mm -hmm. it to Maroon, to anybody that's in the baseball space. What mm -hmm. Peter Angelos has done to this city and me and people like me and fans and turning people off and bad baseball and just all of that – the, the, mm -hmm. the trickle down of what the value of Cal Ripken's memorabilia is or what the value of the iron birds would be, or what the value of baseball in general would be mm -hmm. when they're losing a hundred games, boy, oh boy, this is, this is a new start for them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, you know, we gave John Angelos a fresh start and then he started lying on Martin Luther King day, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, it's just offensive to everybody, but certainly Dan Connolly yelling at him, open the books, mm -hmm. all that uh, lies aside, what's going on on the field. And what's going mm -hmm. on with young people in the city mm -hmm. and the interest level and the fact that baseball is relevant again at a time when Lamar and the Ravens are relevant. We're in a yep. real sweet spot here. I mean, we you came over to my place what, during the plague and took a bunch of items that I didn't want anymore off walls and got rid of them for me and whatnot. And, you know, I think about where we were when mm -hmm. sports wasn't even playing, right? Mm -hmm. Back to where we are now where this is – we have a real going concern about championships around here, Rob. I'm going to say this, and this is a strong statement to make, and you're old school, so you can validate this. Or you, you know, this is the best position the Orioles have ever been in in their entire history of the franchise. They have never had this many prospects either knocking on the door that, or come to fruition at the same time. I don't care what generation, what era of Orioles you look at. They've never had. I would fully I'm, agree with that. Even yeah, Gridge yeah. Coggins, you know, Bumbery, we could talk to yeah. Al about that. Yeah. But you're talking about a Gunnar Henderson that was the number one prospect. He's in the big leagues. Adley is the number one prospect. Jackson Holiday, a number one prospect. And I'm talking number one Major League Baseball prospect, not just number one Orioles prospect. These guys are going to be in Baltimore together. That's unheard of. You don't see this. They're hitting, they're clicking on all cylinders. The Angelos family aside, the front office, the scouting department, the player development, they're doing it all right. And they're hitting they're, 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 they're hitting on every cylinder. And it's amazing to see all these draft picks come to fruition because nobody does that. They didn't even do that in Houston. They missed on guys in Houston, like guys like Mark Appel. But they're hitting on every single guy. And, you know, people sometimes complain about they're keeping some of the guys down in the minor leagues a little too long. But I tell you what it is doing is that when they bring these guys like Westberg and Kowser up, they're ready to play right away. When Kerstad gets here, He's going to be ready to play right away. I have never because they're not going to bring him up because they, 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 you know, they can play Hicks. They, yeah. they, they, they can play Urias. They, they have yeah. guys they can play if Westberg can't make it. If Henderson doesn't yep. turn, you know, I mean, and and as it's turn, I mean, Malcastle's now the guy. We're like, well, is he yeah. is he going to be a yeah. pile diver? Or is he not? And you're yeah, going to have to right sing for your supper whatever. here. They're, yeah, exactly. they're not going to let you hit two twenty if you're Aaron nope. Frazier. They're nope. they're just going to make room. Same thing nope. with pitching. You're not good enough. And I love Bruce Zimmerman, but I mean, he's going to be bubbled out. And then 100%. Grayson Rodriguez is good. You talk about guys that haven't. Yep. Grayson see, Rodriguez we... means the things that haven't worked out well for them. D.L. Hall. D.L. You know, Hall. Uh, Dylan, Gibbons. Dylan Tate. Gibbons. Yeah. All these guys have, you know, and, and some of those guys are going to come to fruition. This hasn't happened yet. But I tell you what. This is a perfect time, a great time to be a young baseball fan in Baltimore. We've got, a, we've got an exciting team. 
because of the rule changes, they sped the game up. So it keeps people a little more interested and engaged. And we've got a core of players that aren't going anywhere. At least it doesn't look like they're going anywhere. You know, we've got guys that you can count on being here for three, four, five years. And it's just, that, that's an exciting time. I've, I've never seen anything like this in Baltimore. I really, really haven't. And even thinking back, like you said, all the days the Gritch, Coggins, Bumbry, this, that, and the other, even with Cal and Eddie, you know, they weren't coming up at the same time. We've never had a group of guys like this all at the same time. It, it's it's amazing what they're doing. And I can just, I hope and pray that uh, we can keep this front office intact, that these guys that run this club don't want to get out of here. Robbie Jr.'s over at Postal USA and Robbie's first base. Um, plug your place. Tell everybody about your hours and, you know, everybody knows sure. where to find you when you're off sure. the road. Um, and, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Saturday and what's going on down at Babe Ruth. Absolutely. Well, Robbie's first base, we've been on York and Ridgely Road for 35 years now. Uh, we buy, sell sports memorabilia, baseball cards. We also help people do fundraisers. And by that, what I mean is we give you our sports memorabilia on consignment at no charge to use at your fundraising event, whatever you sell that item for over what we ask for, you simply give us that amount. Everything over that is yours. If you don't sell the item, you just give it back to us. So it's really a win-win. Um, but the baseball cards and the grading of baseball cards since 2020 has been our number one thing. Selling wax packs of baseball cards, selling graded cards, selling baseball cards in general, because of like what we just said, the Orioles have gotten five, six guys now that people call every day. They want a Jackson Holiday rookie card. They want an Adley Russian rookie card. Now they want a Westberg and a Kowser rookie card. You know, people are excited. And um, it's been great for us because we've been doing this for so long. We've seen the ups, downs, and backs arounds. And now it's like, now we finally have something to be excited about. And uh, I just love having people come in. Uh, even if for new collectors, we, we're, we're really getting to the point now where we're getting new collectors in the business. Like you said, Nestor, you said you used to be a dealer and have a table at shows. Well, that's what these kids are that are coming into the store now. They're dealers with tables at shows, except for their tables at shows aren't tables at shows. They're selling cards on eBay or selling cards on whatnot. And it's exciting because you see kids get excited about that stuff. Fathers and sons. Hey man, I got my high number 61 all-star game there you go. card here. That's mint, dude. I don't know yeah. what, high numbers, right? And then, and I got my beaten up 58. That's got shotgun holes in it. That's like a hole. In it. I got to get a new 58. <laughs> but so if I bring you the 56, and it's in a nice little little container here. Uh, if mm -hmm. I bring you the 56 Louis that's autographed, what do you do mm -hmm. with it? Well, if you wanted to get it graded, we can have the autograph graded as well as the card graded. Or we could just have the autograph. In order for me to sell it, I'd have to get mm -hmm. it graded, right? Basically. Not, not necessarily. You know, that's not that's, that's not necessarily true. Most cards are sold without being graded. But this cards itself for the most money are cards that have been graded. Uh, and it also gives people a comfort level. If you're selling cards on the internet, like most people do, because they don't have a shop to sell it to or a shop to sell it through, they need to have their card graded so that I can look at the card. You may look at a card and say, Robbie, this card is mint. And I may look at the card and say, nah, that card is in excellent condition. Which well, the isn't autograph also needs to be authenticated, right? That, that, this, that I'm not Correct. sitting over here signing Louis's name to all this. Correct. But if we if we get that authenticated and the card graded, it puts a definitive number on there that anybody can relate to. All right. This weekend, Saturday at the Bay Bruce, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Orioles yeah. in town all weekend. Going to be a hot stinker out there as well. Come Tell folks what they can expect when they get down to the Bay Bruce. I mean, beyond being the place where Babe Ruth was born and all this cool matter, yeah. but you guys are yeah. doing literally, you take the joint over, literally yeah. just take over the hallways of Babe's house and sell baseball cards and sell cool stuff. It's awesome. And if it's anything like last year, which I know is going to be better this year, uh, people really are in for a treat. It's 10 to 5 on Saturday. We're going to have live card breaks, which a lot of the collectors will know what that is. Uh, we're going to have some VIP guests, some door prizes. Uh, raffles, some Q&A with the, whoever the uh, Orioles guest is. And more importantly, just going to have a lot of cards down there for people to buy. And we'll also be able to tell you what your things are worth. Like you just said, you know, that 56 Aparicio that's signed. People have things like that. They want to know what it's worth. Just come on in, come down, show it to us. We'll give you an idea of what your card is worth, what it may grade at if you send it away to be graded, and maybe we might even buy something from you that day. But it's going to be a really, really, really fun event. And I tell you, it's a 10 to five event with the Orioles playing the Marlins that night um, and giving away that soccer Jersey. So that'll be cool. So people can make an all day event of it. See, and this is not worth anything, but it's one of my favorite pieces. This is Louie on the those. Sunday pullout 
from the I news American, you know, uh-huh. like uh-huh. this, this, I, so this one's bent. It, it, it's folded. Someone sure. brought me, I mean, listeners, it's my 25th anniversary coming up August 3rd. And I'm begging uh-huh. people to show me old pictures, memories, road trips, share stories, all of that. We're going to be at Costas on the third and drug city on the fourth. So a listener brought me this with the fold in it. And then another listener brought me one that it was perfect. Perfect. So the, the perfect one I have under glass and it's really the only sort of Aparicio related thing that I have yeah. under glass anywhere around here. Um, I don't know, dude. I think I told you the story. I thought this stuff was stolen. All, all of this Aparicio stuff. I had a box. I thought it had disappeared because mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. disappeared at the radio station over the course of time. <laughs> um, and uh, but this this reappeared about a year ago in right time for your event last year. So I thought I'd pull it back out. Get down yeah. there Saturday, support Mike Gibbons, support uh, Sean, everybody down at the uh, Babe Ruth Museum, Katie. Uh, give them my best. If I don't make it this Saturday, I'm sort of well in done. and out of the fence of the summer and baseball and getting away and the beach and all sorts of things are happening. Find Robbie Davis out on the uh, the Netflix with the television show. Um, free plug for Bob and Donna. Uh, maybe I'll get extra free <laughs> onions on my sandwich next time I'm down there. Uh, but if you want to see the ball boys, all you have to do is go to chaps and look there and his autographed pictures and Robbie juniors, like all like this out on the field, you shoot that at Aberdeen. <laughs> Where's that picture taken? That's at Aberdeen. Yeah. I yeah, yeah it's yeah. Aberdeen. Uh, not that I've not out. stared at that while I'm looking at the menu and I already know what I'm going to order. I always order yeah. the same thing, but, uh, <laughs> but I look at all of it again. Do I want sausage? Red? Nah, hell with that. Uh, Robbie can be found over at York and Ridgely. They are Robbie's first base and Postal USA. If you need to mail it, uh, Robbie's there as well. And, you know, Robbie Sr., I tell him don't get his feelings hurt that I had you on. Now that you're 21, Robbie, I want to have you on the show, okay? Absolutely. He's not. I'll, I'll let him down easy. Don't worry. Well, I mean, he's on Dennis's every – he's on the air here three, four times a week. and He I gets mean, plenty of air time. He gets listen, plenty of play. And you tell your old man, and I mean this from my heart, okay? We're five years into crab cake touring. I would invite him out to have a crab cake, but he's too busy uh-huh. working. He would say, I, uh-huh. I can't trust the place with Junior around here. How am I going to leave for <laughs> How am I going to leave for two hours? Come have a crab cake with you up at Pappas. So you let him know that I'm doing the oyster tour, and now your old man's old because I know how old oh, he you loves are. oysters. Yeah, you need oysters when you get old. I, I understand. Here's a story. Here's a story. I'm doing 25 oysters for my 25th anniversary. Okay, I was going to do it in 25 days. I don't know that I'm doing that. I think I may just uh-huh. drag it out so I can do it the right way. But yeah. I'm old enough now to go to the pepper uh, mill. Uh-huh. Right? No, right around not. the corner. So, yeah, nah. yeah. I'll be 55. And uh, yeah, I'll be old enough. So here's the you know, spring chicken at the pepper I've mill. I've heard they have really good like oyster stew or something there. They do so, they, have, they, they do have good food. I, I have been there. Well, your 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 old man's old. He takes you in. You look like you're helping him. You look like <laughs> so I kid the folks at the pepper mill, but I want your dad to join me at the pepper mill. Uh, man, well, I tell you what, I, I want you to want join you. me so I'm not the young guy. All right, we can do that. Deal. Me, you, Robbie Senior at the Pepper Mill doing oyster. When is when is the oyster celebration? I don't know. We're gonna figure it out. I'm gonna. I, I'm just. I'm just making dates with people, Robbie. That's all I'm doing, man. All right. All right, done deal. I'm there. Let's make it happen. Robbie is there. Find him on Netflix. Find him at the Check Out of Chaps. Find him over at right. York and Ridgely. Find him That's on right. Saturday at the Babe Ruth Museum. Uh, it just sounds like there's four of them. There's only one of them. Um, and they broke in the mold when they uh, created Postal. There's no other place in the world like Robbie's First Base Postal USA. Get over to York and Ridgely. Longtime sponsor, supporter, friends. Although I think I've lost dad's friendship now that I've had the kid on, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking crab cakes in Baltimore Positive.